Hello and welcome to the Stolen Minutes channel. This is the channel all about what I'm knitting, crocheting, reading, watching, um, cats. <laughs> I've got my uh, co-host here, Shadow. We'll see how long he sticks around. Um, but this is episode 11 and today is Wednesday, September 4th. I can't believe it. It's been quite a while since I was last here podcasting. Um, I think the last one was like the end of March, beginning of April, something like that. It was a long time ago. So much seems like it has happened since then. Um, and so we'll catch up on that a little bit. And I'll also talk about, I mean, I've got a page <laughs> of things that I've just going through needed to be able to remind myself. So today I'm going to talk about uh, what I have finished since then, what I am currently working on, what I've been reading, what I've watched, um, and a knit along that is coming up in a couple of weeks that I'm super excited about. And I'll also, maybe closer to the end, I'll talk about a shop update that I have happening uh, this Friday and another one in September. We'll talk about those. And you can find me in all the places as Stolen Minutes on Instagram. I am Stolen Minutes underscore. That's where I talk about um, my shop and things that are coming into the shop, but I also share what I'm currently uh, knitting or crocheting on a lot of times and, and some behind the scenes and just cats more than likely if, if it's not knitting or crochet, it's it's probably some cat stuff. So um, I think that's kind of, oh, and on Ravelry, I'm Stolen Minutes. Um, here on YouTube, I'm Stolen Minutes. So um, I will link all those things down below if, if you are wanting to see anything anymore that I talk about. Um, so first, let's just do a quick little recap since last time I recorded, which was in the spring. Late, a late March, early April. Um, of course, school has been out and now it's back in. Um, so that drives a lot of my availability to do things. Um, I sent out a couple of newsletters over the summer and on there I said, Stolen Minutes podcast is taking a break because to be honest, when everybody is home, I just, there's not enough quiet time for me to record and then do all of the editing and things like that. So I just take a pause in the summer and I need to remember to be um, prepared for that because it, it, it sometimes I can, I can feel like, oh, I haven't been on there and I want to, but I need to just tell myself I'm not going to podcast over the summer. It's just too hard. So um, what did we do this summer? Um, kind of the things that stand out in my mind. We went to Gatlinburg Pigeon Forge for vacation. Um, and that is a place that we have gone since I was a kid. Uh, we went this time with my parents and my sister and her family came. And um, so there was nine of us total and uh, we just had a great time. Um, we do, we've been for so many years that we honestly have a spreadsheet of things that we like to do and places we like to eat. Um, and we're just always adding to that. So we, we have quite a collection of things. Um, we love the mountain coasters down there. We went up to Obergatlinburg, which is the ski area up there. We don't ski. It was summertime, but they have an alpine slide and they have a, have a couple of uh, chairlifts or they have a chairlift up there um, that you can go up to the highest point um, at the ski lodge and so that's just a fun ride up and down we got to see bears we saw we saw a bear when we were on the chairlift up at the ski lodge and then we like to do a scenic drive and we saw a bear there um and that bear it, it always amazes me what you see people do when there's these bears like 
people were outside of their cars. No. Um, but he, a couple of cars had pulled away when we were there. <laughs> My cuckoo clock is going to chime. It's 10 o'clock. So, of course, <laughs> it's going to chime a lot. had to wait for the cuckoo clock to stop chiming. Okay. So yeah, so there was a bear and he just sat down like right on the curb. Um, and so that was pretty exciting. Um, so I think we saw bears two times and then we did another scenic drive and we got to see elk. So that was really cool. You could get out at this one area where they had, um, it was, it was like a, a visitor center type of place and there was some historical buildings you could walk back to so we did that and then there was a great big field and they had signs up that said if there are elk in the field you can't go beyond this point or whatever and um it wasn't too long when we first got there there weren't any there and then after we had walked around and we're kind of doing stuff it, it was just getting that much later i guess and there was some out there so that was very cool and they had a whole they had a whole system set up where you on the road side of that big field cars could sit and park and i watched them and they had volunteers out there making sure that both lanes didn't stop and the you know, when the, if the elk were going to cross the road, they stopped traffic for them to do that. And it was very cool. So, um, so we got to see elk and we got to see bear. There is a yarn shop in, uh, Gatlinburg called Smoky Mountain Spinnery. And I had a gift card from my birthday. So I was so excited to be able to spend that. Um, they have, the Knitted Wit National Parks collection. And it seems like the past few years when I've gone, they've had new ones or just ones that I hadn't gotten. So I added to my collection of that. And I even came home and cast one on pretty soon after, which was kind of kind of exciting because I don't usually cast on um, new yarn, it seems like, right away. So um, I love the Knitted Wit sock base that she uses. It's an 80-20 and it is so squishy and just the way she dyes is beautiful. So I, I know whatever I get, I'm going to love it. Um, I love knitting with it. I love wearing the socks that it makes. Um, so I just really, really was excited to get some more of that for my um, yarn collection or stash, whatever you want to call it. Um, and then I was so excited. Another place that we love to go down there is Pigeon River Pottery. It's in Pigeon Forge. And oh my goodness, their pottery is amazing. They they have bear um, molds that they, they have. And they haven't had a new one for a while, but we always have to go in and look. And I was so excited this time because they have yarn bowls. I've never bought one of their yarn bowls. I have some yarn bowls, but I prefer a project bag. So I didn't get a yarn bowl, but this time they had yarn. They had sock yarn. I was so excited. Um, it was a commercial yarn and I've also cast on a pair of socks with that. So I'll show you that in my, um, on the needles segment here, but, um, super excited for all of that. Um, what else? We've just come out of, I heard on the radio, 10 days of consecutive 100 degree temperatures. It has been hot. We've had a couple of stints of really, really hot weather this summer. Um, and this last one started like right after school had, had started, of course. Um, and so it the real, like the temperature was in the upper nineties, but with the real field, the heat index and all that, it was, it was over a hundred degrees for, I guess, 10 days, according to the radio this morning. So, um, 
glad to be done with that. So today's high is like 83 or 85 or something like that. And it feels so cool in comparison. <laughs> like I've, I've worn, I've, I've needed a zip up hoodie in the morning. I've felt that cool. So anyways, all right. I think that catches us all up for the most part. Um, so let's, let's get into what is, let's talk about, let's talk about what is on my needles first. Um, because I have some things I can't wait to share. Um, the, the thing that I started kind of like at the beginning of the summer was a ripple camisole by Jesse made designs. I've seen numerous, uh, people knitting her ripple camisole. Um, she also has the ripple bralette. Um, but I, I want like a full tank top. <laughs> I just think this would feel so, so good under like a flannel or, um, you know, just for like relaxing on the weekend, um, when that happens. So I cast this on with no real plans for it to be finished in, at any time soon, um, because it is, it is ribbing and it is quite a bit of ribbing. Um, I don't know. I might be halfway, like, that starts from the bottom. I might be like halfway up. I don't know. I haven't even measured it, but, um, it's just, it's just really, it's nice to work on. Oh, shadow your face. <laughs> so it's just ribbing and, um, it, this yarn is, see, I'm out of practice from not doing this for too long. Um, so this is graphic dye works yarn. <laughs> Shadow. Ah, there we go. This is graphic dye works in the color fizzy flamingo, which is pretty appropriate. Um, it's got little speckles of pink, darker pink in it. Um, and it's such a squishy, squishy base. Um, this might be an 80-20. Is it? Yes, this is an 80-20 base. So super wash and nylon. Um, so it's just been one of those where if I don't know what I'm working on or I need something to just keep me kind of a little bit engaged, I'll knit on this. So the Ripple Ripple Tank by Jesse Made. That has been a staple that I've worked on here and there. Um, and then the other two things on my needles that I've been working on the most is two pairs of socks. And I'll show you this one first. So these are for my college kid. And this is Serpent Tail by Happy Mermaid Yarn Company. So this is Serpent Tail and Shadow. Oh, I know. So it's like a blue and green and it's got some tan in there. It's got some pops of like a lime green. What? What do you need down here? You can sit behind me. Or on my lap. That works too. Oh boy. Okay. Figure out what you're doing. Figure it out. Where are you going? Okay. We'll see how this goes. I don't know. Okay. So, little, 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 little. Serpent Tail, Happy Mermaid Yarn Company. Um, and this is for my college kid. So this is sock number one. I've had it ready to finish off the toe and I needed her to try it on to make sure that it was, it was right. Um, because I, I have, I have switched up, um, my needle sizes for knitting socks. Um, up to this summer for the past like going on 20 years, I have knit socks on a US two and a half, three millimeter, um, and I've done a 60 stitch sock. And 
I've been happy with that gauge up until it seems like this spring, all of a sudden, I felt like my my stitches were almost looking twisted. Like I think I was just trying to get the fabric to come out a little tighter. And I thought, you know what, why don't I just adjust the needle size instead of continuing to like frustrate myself with um, the, the needle or, or knitting tighter. So I've been experimenting with um, a US one and a half and a US one. And I think I'm finding that I like the fabric that I'm making with the US one, um, but I'm still kind of figuring out what stitch count I like. A 64 stitch is just a little more snug than I would prefer for me. Um, like around just, just all, just in general, like the instep and around the cuff. Um, I just want to be a little looser. So I've cast on a 68 stitch sock and I think that might be the winner. Um, but there's also the difference between an 80-20 and a 75-25 yarn. So, I don't know. I don't love this experimenting, to be quite honest. Um, I just want to knit <laughs> and not, not have to think about it. So, it's been a little bit frustrating, but I also enjoy the challenge of, like, trying something new. So, um, so that's neither here nor there. But... I, I have been experimenting with that this summer. So I think that has affected my, my sock output because I just am having to like think more. Um, so the other pair of socks that I've been knitting on is this pair. And this is the yarn that I was telling you about from the Pottery Place. I had never seen this yarn before. Volbean, ugh. I know I'm not saying that right, and I am sorry about that. Um, but and it, this is color number 42. They don't have names as far as I can tell. Um, but uh, I do love how it's knitting up. I love when they have the speckled. So I am just about two rows into the heel flap on this one. This is the first sock. So this is the first 68 stitch sock that I'm doing um, to see if I like that. The other pairs of socks that I've knit this summer, um, I intentionally cast on for my mom because I knew the 64 stitch would more than likely fit her. I just know it wouldn't fit me maybe the way I would want because I have historically needed um, the wide calf like on, on tall boots and things like that. I will historically need the the wide calf version of things. I don't know why. Um, but so I knew that might be, um, the 64 stitch might be just a little tighter than what I would want. I still could get them on and I still could wear them, but I'm just looking for that like perfect fit. So that is what is on my needles. What is, um, what I'm getting ready to cast on. I just put I just put my bag of things together the other day is my husband and I, our anniversary is coming up on the 15th of this month. And I always knit him a hat. Um, his birthday is at the end of September. So sometimes if I don't get it done for our anniversary, then it becomes like an anniversary birthday hat. But um, this year I decided I am going to knit him the color work cap by church mouse classics um and this is a pattern that i picked up at a yarn shop stitch yarn studio down in covington kentucky and they had a huge wall of rowan felted tweed and that is the yarn um used for this hat and he's getting up where are you going okay okay um, so they had a huge wall of Rowan felted tweed and that is what this hat uses. I can't tell. Yep. Yep. Um, so you use four colors of Rowan felted tweed and, um, I picked this up figuring that I will make more than 
one hat with it, but I got these colors. I got this uh, turquoisey teal color. I love this like bright yellow green. I got a black and then um, this gray tweed. And their Rowan felted tweed is all tweed yarn. Um, so this is the green. I love it. Um, so I think the main body of the hat I'm going to do in the black and then the uh, stone color, the gray will be the other color and then the green and the turquoise will be the contrasting pops of color in there. So um, I'll do the black for the main color and the stone, the light gray will kind of be the background color on those pops. So I'm really excited to get that cast on. I thought I was going to get cast on this weekend um, over Labor Day weekend, but it just didn't happen. So, um, so hopefully this week sometime. Um, so that is, that is new, new coming to the needles. Um, and I hope it knits up fairly quick. <laughs> we'll see. Um, okay. Off my needles. I am not going to show everything that I have finished between, um, April and now, mainly because I don't have them in my possession anymore. Uh, like I said, I was experimenting with different sock sizes. So um, a few pairs of the socks that I finished, I have already given them to my mom. And so I don't have them. Um, I might try to pop a picture in here. We'll see um, how that works out. But I will, I will just kind of talk through um, what I finished. So since April, I have finished seven pairs of socks. Um, off the top of my head, I know that one of those was the National Parks yarn. I think it was National Cascades Park. Um, they were like a red and uh, like navy predominant like kind of pair. Um, I have finished a pair of Barbie themed socks. They were a skein cocaine uh, release from 2023 when the Barbie movie came out. So those were just a fluorescent pink with some speckles of color. Love those. I had knit myself a pair of those um, last summer, like after the yarn came out. And then I had a skein for my mom too. So I knit her pair this summer. Um, I just finished those up pretty recently. Um, and oh, I had a pair from um, Ridiculous Yarns and that colorway was Hello Gorgeous and it was a beautiful um, pinks and purples and that one I did a different heel on it. I usually do a heel flap and gusset just um, your standard but this time I did a heel flap with a square heel turn and those were really fun. Um, the I did link the instructions for those on that pair of socks. So if you go on my Ravelry page and look for, I think I call them Hello Gorgeous socks. Um, and I have the link there, but it was through Mason Dixon knitting that website. Um, if you, or if, if you search like square heel Mason Dixon, it, it'll pop up. But I do have it linked on that pattern page. So that heel is really fun. Um, it, it sets up a little bit different than like your standard heel turn, but uh, it fit nice. I will say the main difference that I found is I had to knit the foot longer than I did on my regular heel turn or heel flap um, gusset and heel turn sock. I had to knit a longer foot on the square heel than I normally do. Um, but the fit was nice and I think I do see myself doing some more of that. It'll just be a matter of if I can remember <laughs> to do that in, instead of what I'm used to doing. So, um, so that is kind of it for socks off the top of my head that I, I can remember, um, finishing, but two things that I have recently finished, I do still have, and I'll share those. Um, so I, 
I knit a baby muscle burra hat. Oh my goodness. Is this not the cutest thing you've ever seen? So it's just like the muscle burra hats that we all know and love, um, but it is baby sized. So I have made the adult small, I've made the medium, I've made the large, I've made the extra large. Um, I don't know, I think I've knit I don't think I numbered this one, but I, this might be number 14 that I've knit. Um, but this little guy only used up like 48 grams of yarn. So this is, this is wonderful. So if you had a couple of sock leftovers, you could make like a double colored hat. You could do two different colors depending. So this is a nice little stash buster hat, but I knit this for a coworker of my husband's. Um, I'm quite proud of myself because she's not even due until December. So it's already a win because this is done in August. So, um, yeah, I see more of these in my future. I just want to make them because they're so daggone cute. So little baby muscle burra, highly, highly recommend. Um, yeah, so cute. So that was most recently finished. And this took me, I don't even know if it took me 10 days, something like that. I think when I did my Ravelry, like I know we took a, we took a little weekend trip and I was able to knit in the car for maybe like five hours total. And I basically did the bit between the increases and the decreases in that time. Um, so yeah, this was a fun little knit. Um, okay, so the next thing that I recently finished, and you might have seen these on my Instagram, I finished up these tiny tree socks. It's a free pattern by Summerly Knits. She has great sock knitting patterns. And yeah, these little guys, so cute. Whoops. Um, and let's see, I made these for my coworkers again. Like I'm, I'm working ahead. I can't even believe it. Uh, so these will be for Christmas gifts, but I see more of these um, happening because they were so fun. Um, maybe they took like two TV shows. I mean, you could easily probably do one in like an hour, maybe. Um, but they're just teeny little socks. And I knit these, I thought I had knit them all in Knitted Wit in the National Parks colors, but one is Skang Cocaine. Um, and so this one is a skein cocaine color. Can I show it? Ooh. So this is skein cocaine. This is her Blue Ridge, Virginia Blue Ridge Parkway. Is that it? Virginia Blue Ridge. Um, this was a yarn curl color from I think last year, but I did knit a pair of socks out of this. So I had this extra laying around, but then the rest of these are all knitted wit. Um, I know this one is the Great Smoky Mountains, and I have knit three pairs of socks with that, I believe. Um, and then this was the one that I most recently finished that I was saying. Um, I actually described it more as red and blue, but it's more orange and blue and purple. I think it was like Cascades National Park. Um, I think she takes the... Um, poster for it and then pulls the colorway from that as inspiration. And then I do not remember this one. I feel like this was a national park in Hawaii. These were socks that I made for my sister. So these were all just extra leftovers that I had. Um, and I will definitely be making more of these. This is the tiny tree sock pattern free by Summerlee Knits. So those were fun. So that, that is all that I have on my needles. Um, I do have, I do have some other things that need my attention. 
Um, I have uh, a, sp a Christmas sweater that needs finished. Um, and yeah, but we'll, we'll deal with that later. <laughs> One thing at a time. But what I am super excited for is a scrappy monster muscle wear knit along happening um, it starts September 15th, and that is hosted by Sue and Jesse. Sue is SM Karn on Instagram, and Jesse is Circle Toes. And they have hosted scrappy knit alongs with socks and muscle bra hats in the past, and I love their knit alongs. They're just super chill, they're casual. Um, she has a hashtag, I believe it's Monster Musselboro 24. Um, she does have prizes, and this year she hosted a scrappy yarn swap, and I participated in that. It was really fun. Um, she just had everybody stuff like a quart size baggie with their leftovers and send them to her, and Sue divvied them all out and sent them all out to everybody, and so everyone is getting all of their things together. And I've got my bag all ready to go. I've got needles in there. I'm ready to start. Um, I think I probably see myself doing some baby, some more baby muscle bra hats. I might do one for my niece. Um, we'll see. I don't know. We'll see how many I can make. Um, but I'm really excited for that. So go check out um, their, their Instagram pages and get all the details for it. Um, but if you use the hashtag, they're going to be drawing for prizes. I might've sent along a couple of things for giveaway prizes. Just have to wait and see. So that is coming up in a couple of weeks. Um, okay, let's move on. What have I been reading and watching? Let's talk about books first. Um, Oh my goodness. I am reading two excellent books right now. I'm reading one, like a hard copy, and then I'm listening to another. So currently the book that I am reading is For the Love of Summer, and that is by Susan Mallory. Um, I'm just looking at my notes because I've got authors' names and I don't want to mix them all up. For the Love of Summer by Susan Mallory excellent book. My sister and my mom uh, both had read this and passed it on to me. It's very good. Um, it's not a, it's not a, it's not, um, it's not a romance book. It's not a thriller. Um, it's just a nice, it's just a story. Um, and Summer is one of the characters in the book. So uh, highly recommend that book. And the other one that I'm listening to that I cannot put down, I think I have maybe less than three hours left or something. I mean, I've, I've been popping my, my headphones on at any chance. I listen to it in the car, no matter how long I have to listen. It is so good. It is called The Housemaid and it's by Frida McFadden. This one is a thriller. Um, I listened to her book, The Inmate, maybe last spring or something like that or fall and it was also a thriller very good um she just has a way of telling the story where you're just you're like going no don't do that or you're like oh my gosh I can't believe that happened or how could you be so dumb and not think of that um but now it's starting to all kind of turn and what you thought was true isn't you're hearing the other side of the story so good. Highly recommend. I believe it's, um, there's three total. There's the housemaid is watching and there's another one. And I, I can't remember what that is right now, but I will be listening to the next two. I am sure of it because it is so good. Um, okay. So I read so many great books over the past few months. Um, I just kind of wrote them down and I'm just going to like rapid fire them at you because they were all too good to not mention them. Um, most recently that I finished, um, these are the like 
paper books that I, I read. I'll tell you what I listened to, but I read Run, Rose, Run by James Patterson and Dolly Parton. I started that one um, before we went down to Tennessee because Dolly Parton, Tennessee, Gatlinburg, Pigeon Forge, all that stuff. Um, and I just thought that'd be a great book to read. Um, I don't really know how much of a part Dolly had in writing it. Um, I, I didn't really research that. So um, it was really good. It's about a young musician um, who, who gets herself to Nashville. She wants to be a star, but of course there's more to the story than just she wants to be a star. So highly recommend Run, Run Rose, Run. The other, the, the book that I read before that was The Titanic Sisters by Patric Patricia Falvey. This one was very good. This one um, was set around the Titanic, of course. Um, it was about two sisters and they were coming from, ooh, I forget what town they were from, but they came on the Titanic over to the U.S. They were both coming for jobs to be nannies, um, but kind of two totally different sorts of jobs. One was being sent by her parents to a um, more affluent house and the other one to a house where she was not going to work um, or have quite as cushy of a life as the other sister. Um, and of course the, um, the crash of the Titanic kind of changed the course of their lives. And so it was very good. Um, highly recommend that one too. Um, the other book that I finished this summer was Night Work by Nora Roberts. Anything Nora Roberts writes generally is is great in my opinion. Um, this one was a, her books always have a bit of a mystery to them. Um, so suspense, things like that. Um, and this one did as well. So that one was very, very good. Um, and then I, I didn't listen to as much, um, just because time wasn't quite as available, but I did finish The Four Winds by Kristen Hanna. That one was a long book to listen to. I forget if it was like 12 hours or more to listen to. And it was just a heavier storyline to get through. It was about the Dust Bowl and um, it was very good, but just the content felt, it felt like a slower read than others. Now, The Women by Kristen Hanna, I flew through that one. Um, just a really different pace of a story, but anything I've read by Kristen Hanna has been excellent. The first one I read of hers was The Great Alone. That was very, very good. Um, I listened to that one. Um, I believe The Women was the only one of hers that I have read in like physical um, paper version, um, the rest I've listened to, but, um, I'm looking forward to reading more of her books. Um, and then I listened to the third book in the Tracy Drew knitting series. So this was Hanks and a Hitman. I listened to that one. They all kind of, I believe there's five total. Um, they all follow the same formula. There's, um, a murder, she stumbles into it or gets herself involved in the solving of the case every time. Um, and it's just lighthearted and easy to listen to or read. Um, <laughs> she, she owns a yarn shop that her grandparents had started and she came and, and was working there and now owns it. There's two cats, Pearl and the other one is slipping my mind, but it's a very easy book to listen to. It's a nice little palate cleanser. So I have two more of those. I might listen to one of those after this housemaid book, but I can also see myself just like diving right into the next in that three book series. So that is the majority of what I have read and or been listening to over the past few months. 
and let's move on to TV, movies, things like that. Um, I'll admit that we are not the best <laughs> when it comes to getting shows watched or finished um, or even watching movies. We just, all of a sudden it'll be, we're both exhausted and, and it's just time to go to bed. We we have good intentions to watch a movie or watch a series and we take forever to finish a series and we tend to rewatch movies that we like because... I don't know. We just do. <laughs> um, okay. So shows that we've been watching, we've been watching the Gilded Age. Um, I believe that is on Netflix and it's the American version of Downton Abbey. So the characters have a bit of sass to them. There's, I think the writing is, is really good. The cats are crazy. That was just Ramona. If you heard that that noise. I think the cool air, I have the windows open because it is just beautiful. Um, <laughs> but it's making them all a little bit crazy. So they're having a good time. Um, so yes, the Gilded Age, very much enjoying that series. We're maybe halfway through the first season, something like that. Um, and then the other thing that my husband found that we've been watching just here and there is Unsolved Mysteries. It's kind of a reboot of that, that television show. <laughs> she just went racing up the stairs. She'll probably be back down. She's crying up there. She'll be back. Um, uh, so it's like a reboot of that series from the eighties. And so there's, um, story, there's unsolved mysteries. Some are like folklore things like the Mothman, but then others are cold cases from, um, we just watched one that was from like the late seventies, uh, things like that. So they go through and, and tell how they've re-dug up this case. They talk to people from back then. Um, they do DNA on samples, old samples, stuff like that. So that, that has been something we just watch when we don't know what else we want to watch. Um, and then the other thing that we kind of just put on, if we're just wanting a quick show with some comedy is hot ones. And it's, um, it's part, it's on YouTube. Um, the channel is called now we feast. I can't remember the host's name, but he will bring on celebrities, musicians, and they have 10 hot sauces that go from like low spice to like sign a waiver hot spice. Um, two of the people, two of the episodes that we recently watched that were just very hilarious. The best one was Hugh Jackman and Ryan, Ryan Reynolds. They were promoting their movie uh, Deadpool. Um, I think, no. Oh, what movie? the one that came out this year, um, or this summer, they were hilarious. They both got about halfway through. We have a delivery coming here. I don't know what it is, but but I have my windows open. So it makes me feel weird. Ramona went running away. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a good day. You too. Okay. Um, so yes, Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman, they got about halfway through these hot sauces and they were crying. But they... He, and he asks them questions. So they'll, they'll do some hot sauce. And then he asks them kind of heavier questions that require some, some thought to answer. And so he, as they, it seems like as they get into the hotter sauces where they're so preoccupied with just what they're feeling in their mouth, that answering these hard questions 
are even harder. And so he kept asking them questions and Hugh Jackman especially was, he was, he was in some pain, but they got all the way through, but that was an excellent episode. We've watched some others where I've been a little bit like, hmm, <laughs> not into it, but Hugh Jackman and Ryan Reynolds, I mean, they're both so cute anyways, but, um, they, they just seem like such nice guys and they were, they were a hoot to watch, um, do all these sauces and, and listen to their questions. And then the other one that we watched was Vince Vaughn. And, um, he, he was surprisingly, he might've had the same lineup of sauces. Kind of seems like they do the same sauces for everybody within a season. Um, and so they had, he had the, if he had the same sauces as Hugh Jackman and Ryan Reynolds, Vince Vaughn blew them out of the water. He barely shed a tear, until like maybe the last one. Um, I don't know. He must be very accustomed to eating hot sauces because it was, it was pretty crazy. Um, there's, there's a wild thing over here. There's Ramona. <laughs> Moni. Yeah. Are you okay? This cool air feels good, doesn't it? I know. We're very whiny. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yep. <laughs> I know. Poor Momo. Um, so those are, that's, yeah, those are the three shows that we've been most recently watching. Now, if I am able to get the TV to myself, the show that I've stumbled on and have liked. Me and my sister are always sharing the home improvement shows that we like. Um, and the one that I found most recently is called Houses with History, and it's on HGTV, and they restore homes in, so far it's just been the Massachusetts area, um, that are historical in nature, and they're maybe from like the 1800s, and they're at risk of being demolished or they're in such a state of disrepair that nobody is going to put the money into them, but they restore them back to, um, the characteristics of the time period in which they were built. And so it is really, I, I just love that kind of stuff. I love old houses. I love hearing the stories behind them and things like that. They'll, they'll show the renovations, of course, but then the one uh, gentleman who is kind of more the, the funding aspect of things, he also loves history. So he goes and, and, um, researches the history of the home, like who originally built it, who lived there, what they did, um, just all of that kind of stuff. So I really, really like those little extra tidbits of information. And of course, the work that they do is beautiful. It's a husband and wife team. She does the interior designing part of it. And then there's um, a third gentleman who is the carpenter and, and kind of does the heavy lifting of the repairs that need done. Um, so that has been very enjoyable. Oh, when we were in Tennessee, the show that us girls uh, kind of got onto was my million dollar dream home. It was on HGTV and, oh, I can't remember the host's name, um, but he hosted a show called like Color Splash or something, I think, before. Um, and he's super cute and fun. Uh, but the first, we we tended to like the episodes where the people won <clears throat> large amounts of, um, oh, it was my lottery, my million dollar lottery dream home, I think is what it was. Um, but the people who won like millions of dollars, this one couple, I don't even remember how many millions they won. They ended up buying like an entire mountain. So yeah, super cool. And the houses are amazing. I mean, some of these houses come like fully furnished and just beautiful. So um, those are the shows that, that we've been watching most recently and enjoying. And for movies, 
we watched several that are older. So when we were on vacation, we we were talking and, and my sister was <clears throat> shocked that we had not seen Alien or Twister. She loves Twister. She says she used to watch that all the time. Um, and I said, uh, I don't know if it came out like when I was in college or something and just not watching movies very much. So this summer we got back from vacation and and it was on our minds. So we watched Twister and then we watched the old, the original first Alien movie. Oh my goodness. I don't know what I thought that movie <laughs> was going to be like, but it was nothing like I thought it was going to be. I honestly didn't think Alien was like as scary as everybody always led me to believe that it was. But anyways, we watched Alien. I can totally see watching it again. And I, I do see why um, everybody loved it. I feel like it's kind of a timeless movie. It doesn't, I mean, it's set in the future, so it's not dated. I don't know. It felt very timeless to me. Um, and Twister was very good. Of course, Twister 2 or whatever came out this summer. Haven't seen that yet. Uh, but it was also very good. It was just, I don't know. It was good. Um, and then uh, we most recently watched Little Miss Sunshine again. Hadn't seen that probably since it came out. Um, and I remembered that it was funny, but it, it, it is a good movie. So I recommend that if you've never seen that. And then a summer staple that we always watch is Summer Rental um, with John Candy. And oh my gosh, like that movie cracks me up. So um, we quote little pieces of that all the time. And yeah, so that is it for like movies and books and knitting. Um, the last thing I think I will talk about today is just the shop updates that are coming up real quick. Um, the first one will be this Friday, September 6th. It will be at 11 a.m. Eastern um, time. And I will have two prints in this shop update. I will have a cat print by Charlie Harper. I'm calling this one Cat and Mouse got some of these calico kitties some have a mouse there's like a salamander there um but this is a charlie harper print which you know we love charlie harper and the other print is going to be this um autumn floral this is a rifle paper co rifle co fabric and i just love all of their florals and i've just like how these look together. So we'll just put them in an update together. So I will have these in our small, medium, and large. This is our medium size. And I love this size for, um, well, that's what I have my color work hat in, um, is in the medium. So there's four 50 gram skeins of DK in here. Um, this bag is big enough that you can take a paper pattern and you can fold it in half and it fits inside your medium bag. Um, the small size is perfect for socks. That is what I have my sock projects in. Um, this is an old bag that will not be in this update, um, but <clears throat> this is the small bag. And the large is large. I always hear everybody say, wow, it's way bigger than I thought it was. Um, it's perfect for sweaters, blankets, anything large like that. I even use it to hold multiple project bags in. I think one time I had like six small project bags, like knitting, like blah, blah, sock projects in that one, in their individual bags, in that large bag. So these will be this Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern and I will have it in all the sizes and these will ship before our next update which is on September 20th. Um, there might be a few more of these that that I put in the Sept September 20th update um, but they will that update will primarily be our Halloween update and I'm going to have two Charlie Harper prints in this one. We had these a couple of years ago, and 
I just, they're so good. I wanted to bring them back. So this is bats and campfires. So we've got campfire here with people. Or oh, there it is. There's people. You got the bat, the bullfrog. You kind of see here, it's like the bullfrog is underneath and the campfire and the bat is at the top. So that is the first one. And then there is rented. And this has a cute little wren bird in the, the skull. So to me, they are more a nod to Halloween than like full on pumpkins and ghosts and witches. So I love, I love a gentle nod to the holiday. So these will be on September 20th, again at 11 a.m. Both are Friday updates. And if, if I have some of these, I will pop some more of these in with this update, but they will be pretty separate. So don't hold out for these when these come out because I may not have too many to add to it. Um, so this Friday, September 6th at 11 a.m. and September 20th at 11 a.m. Um, oh, and these will be in our medium size, which is what this is, and large. And these will be in small and medium. Not going to do these in a large and not doing these in the small. So just a little update on that. If you want to... 100% know when a shop update is going to happen, please get on our newsletter um, list because that is the best way to know when those updates are going to happen. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram, Instagram can be a little bit finicky about what it shows you, even on people that you follow and or like, um, but it is a surefire way that it will come to your email if, if you want to know for sure when an update is happening. Um, thanks for hanging out with me today. This was really fun. I have missed being here and I hope that I can do these once a month is probably the, uh, most regular that I can be with recording these. And I always enjoy reading your comments and getting to talk to you down below in the comments. It just is really inspiring and um, just just makes the whole thing really, really um, worth it. So please let me know what you're knitting or, or crocheting, what you're working on. Let me know if you have read or listened to any of these books or if there are any others that you would recommend because I always love getting suggestions from other people. And yeah. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, week. And so until next time, I hope that you find lots of stolen minutes in your day to knit or crochet or whatever crafty endeavor you are loving at the moment. Um, so until then, take care. Talk to you later. Bye.